Okay, so on the bench right now, I have this weird Sony VXA electronic book reader thing from Japan thing. Basically, it's like an early e-reader from the 90s that I'm recapping. On the inside, though, like every other Sony product from the 90s, we have, if I can actually point on here, oh, there it is, um, we have surface mount capacitors. Um, little tiny electrolytic cans, they became quite popular in the late 80s. Um, they're still quite popular today, but the problem is, is that these early capacitors, I don't know if it's that we've reached end of life or they just weren't there yet. But what's happened is that after 15, 20, 25 years, they've started to leak. And this is a problematic because they've all gone out of tolerance. The electronic components don't work worse yet because they're leaking. Um, the um, electrolyte gets onto the board, starts eating at traces and vias and leaching into nearby ICs and causing an all-out rest and root wreck and ruining the board. Um, some people, um, a famous actually um, example of this is if you have a compact Mac, like the Macintosh 2CI, or that's not even a compact Mac, SC30, there's a fantastic example of a compact Mac. Um, they all have these caps in them, they're leaking. Um, the Macs are going to do all sorts of weird things when they're leaking. you got to change them out. Some people replace them with uh, solid state versions. I do have a couple here somewhere. Ah, there they are. Yeah, little solid state stuff like this made of tantalum. Um, other people switch them right back out with the original ones, but to remove them is the problem. Now, there's a couple ways you can go at it. You could go with a hot air gun and risk burning all the components around it, and or even the cap itself blowing up. Uh, another thing you can use are SMD tweezers, and those seem to work quite well with tantalums, but with these ones here, it doesn't work all that well. Same applies if you are using a conventional soldering iron. And I don't have any fantastic like paste or something like that. But I found overall, even with the higher end equipment, um, because the electrolyte has leaked also, it's affected the solder and it corrodes the living hell out of it. I wouldn't so much say it changed its chemical properties, but it's really difficult to melt it and get the component off. Um, often you'll find yourself burning the pads for the capacitor. And if that pad travels into a vial or there's a vial directly under it, you're in serious trouble because it's going to be a complete pain trying to figure out how to get that back on. Um, and yeah, it just looks really ugly. I don't really enjoy mechanically removing components off boards. That could be as simple as flexing the backside of a board with a BGA chip and just knocking with a hammer or going with QFPs and just popping the pins out from underneath them and pulling them up, like say the mixed GA, uh, the Motorola 68000. But in this case here, it works, and I don't understand that. Anyways, let's get to that. So, we have a cap. I need to remove it. It's leaked around it, so I can't desolder it. So all I have to do is take my pliers. And without going to the left or right or up or down or anything like that, I'm just going to clamp on to the side of it. There we go. I'm just going to rotate it. And also move my light a bit so you can see what the hell I'm doing. There we go. I'm just going to rotate it slowly. And what this does is it pulls the cap, in this case here, clean off the board. There we go. And the pads are fantastic. Um, they need to be tinned up, but I can ready to put another cap on there. And just to prove that this isn't a one-off, I'm going to grab another cap over here. And again, grab it, twist it. Don't go too fast or you will actually rip the pads off and ruin the point I'm trying to get to here. Ah. There we go. That was a nasty one too. Wow, okay. But that one's out. And three's a charm. We'll do the one right next to it. Ah, there we are. Just grab it. Twist. You can go clockwise or counterclockwise. It doesn't really matter. The point is, is that I also don't want to pull upwards as well while I'm doing this, because that really increases the chances of ripping a pad. I'll just twist it. And this will pull the leads out of the cap. Here we go. And that should just pop right off. And again, boom. In that three cases there, um, the cap is off. Um, a little bit of cleaning and removing of the remainder of the leads. There's no lifted pads. Um, the corrosion is already pretty bad in this case here, but I didn't lift a pad. And I've done this now about six dozen times with a number of Macs, GPS devices, and other Sony pieces of crap. 
and even cameras, and it's all the same. I don't lift a pad. Just twist like this, and it works. So, um, please don't go after me if you manage to somehow mess it up, but this is becoming a tried and proven way for me. So, if you have a scrap board that you know um, is leaking, give it a try. Um, once you're confident with it, sure, you do it as well.